In this problem, we have the predicate x is greater than 1 over x. So in part a, I'm going to write p of 2, p of 1 half, and so on. So let's start with oops, p of 2. And p of 2 says that 2 is greater than 1 half, which is true. And p of 1 half says that 1 half is greater than 1 over 1 half. So here I need to do a little simplifying, and I have 1 half is greater than 2, which is false. All right, next is p of negative 1. And that says that negative 1 is greater than 1 over negative 1, which, again, if I simplify, just says that negative 1 is greater than itself, which has to be false. And what do we have next? P of negative 1 half. which says that negative one-half is greater than one over negative one-half, and that simplifies to negative one-half is greater than negative two, which is true. And P of negative eight says that negative eight is greater than one over negative 8, or negative 8 is greater than negative 1 over 8, and that is false. So there are my five statements that we were looking for, and now we're going to find the truth set of P of X if the domain of X is the set of real numbers. Now, to find the truth set of p of x, what I'm going to do is look at the expression x is greater than 1 over x, or I should call it the inequality, x is greater than 1 over x, and I'm going to solve this. I'm going to find the solution set. So just keep in mind, as you learned in college algebra or whatever algebra class you've had before, that we can't multiply both sides by x here. So I do have to subtract 1 over x from both sides so that I get x minus 1 over x is greater than 0. And now I can multiply the x that I have here by x over x and that gives me a common denominator. So then I have x squared minus 1 over x is greater than 0. And I'll factor x minus 1 times x plus 1 over x is greater than 0. Okay, so now I have my factored expression greater than zero, and I can find the solution set by using intervals. Okay, I've taken my factors and I've listed them on the left, and you've probably seen a variation of this. This is the way I do this type of problem, and all teachers put their own little spin on this kind of thing, but you're doing essentially the same steps. So you may not do it exactly the way I do it, but this is just to give you an idea of how to find the solution set. So I've subdivided the set of real numbers into four intervals. We've got negative infinity to negative 1, we've got negative 1 to 0, 0 to 1, and 1 to infinity. And because we are only looking for numbers, uh, values of x, that make an expression that is greater than zero, not equal to, but simply greater than, we know that we're not going to include any of these endpoints. So you know that going in. Now, if I plug in a value 
into um, x plus 1 that is less than negative 1, then say negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 gives me negative 1. That's a negative. So everyone in the interval is going to agree. Um, all the numbers in the, the same interval are going to give the same positive or negative. Different values, of course, but they'll either all be positive or all be negative. In this case, it's negative. Now, if I plugged in negative 1 to x plus 1, um, that's my endpoint, and that gives me 0. And if I plug in a value between negative 1 and 0, that gives me a positive. And since I'm not going to go through 0 again, I have to stay on the positive side because this is a linear factor. So we go negative, 0, positive in this case because our quantity is increasing, right? We have x plus 1. Um, x has a positive coefficient, so it's going to be increasing. Same thing with x. It's going to go negative, 0, positive. So where is the 0 here? It's at 0. So it's going to be negative, and then 0, and then positive. And x minus 1 is going to have a 0 at 1, at 1, and that's also increasing, so that's negative, 0, and positive. So then we have negative, positive, negative, positive. So I'm just multiplying three negatives multiply to make a negative, and it's really multiply and then divide, but it doesn't matter. Um, still works out the same. And then we have a positive and two negatives, always make a positive. Po two positives and a negative is negative, and three positives, of course, multiply to make a positive. Now we want positives. So I want these two intervals. I want negative 1 to 0 and 1 to infinity. And that's my final answer for part B. Negative 1 to 0, union 1 to infinity. Now I can also use this to solve part C. In part C, we're just limiting to the set of positive real numbers. So for part C, just going to make a little space over here. For part C, my solution is just 1 to infinity because I can only use the part of the interval where um, our, my real numbers are positive. And that's the end of that problem.